Hello, I am Jan Verhaert and I will give some background information on our recent MRM paper entitled Gibbs Ringing in Diffusion MRI. Let's first explain why Gibbs Ringing is such an important artifact for quantitative MRI. Well, every signal in time domain can be represented by a weighted sum of oscillating wave functions. The amplitudes of the wave functions correspond to the Fourier coefficients. It are those coefficients that we measure in MRI. Indeed, the case space captures the frequencies encoded in the image that can be generated by the inverse Fourier transformation. However, due to practical constraints, one cannot measure the high frequencies that are needed to describe the sharp signal edges. If we suppress some of the high frequencies, then we can immediately see that ringing occurs in the signal. Indeed, the high frequencies needed to describe the sharp edges are now missing and the lower frequencies shine through. The, the suppression of the high frequency components corresponds to a multiplication of the case space of the box function. Multiplic multiplication in the one corresponds to a convolution in the other space in case of Fourier transformations. Since the Fourier transform of a box function equals a sync function, you can see that the truncation of the case space corresponds to co convolution of the image with a sync function. The amplitude of the undesired fluctuations is limited to 9% of the signal step. Undershoots and overshoots of the signal alternate between voxels. I'll now explain why those signal fluctuations are such a problem in diffusion in MRI. Let us consider the strong edge between CSF and the corpus callosum. At a non diffusuated signal, the CSF has high signal, whereas the corpus callosum has lower signal. In that case, the first Gibbs slope of the corpus callosum, which is basically the dominant one, will be negative. If we apply the fusion weighting with, for example, B equals 1 or 2, then the CSF signal will be almost fully suppressed, while the signal in the corpus callosum is relatively high due to the low radial diffusivity. In that case, the signal in the corpus callosum is higher than the, corpus ca than the CSF, and the main Gibbs slope will be positive. The Gibbs pattern being out of phase amplifies the signal perturbations, leading to severe biases in diffusivities and all other metrics. Negative diffusivities are even not uncommon because of this effect. With DKI, the problem is even worse. We actually don't estimate the kurtosis, K, but we estimate K tilde. K tilde equals K times D squared. So K equals K tilde divided by D squared. Given that D can become infinitely small or even negative, small perturbations on K tilde will blow up often in resulting in those notorious black voxels in the kurtosis maps. The Gibbs artifact originates in the cutoff of frequencies. A sudden step in the case space corresponds to a convolution with a sync function. Therefore, a first strategy to cure the Gibbs artifact is to smooth a step in the case space by adding an additional window filter. We need a filter that downweights higher frequencies so that a smooth transition to zero is achieved. Unfortunately, these operations involve the suppression of case space data, Signal blur, partial voluming, and resolution loss are therefore unavoidable if you apply a window filter. From a diffusion perspective, smoothing might mix tissue and CSF signal. Therefore, we get a decreased fractional isotropy, or an increased mean diffusivity, or a mean, an increased mean kurtosis in structures like the corpus callosum. Smoothing can't differentiate between Gibbs, noise, anatomy, and therefore there is need for a more specific, targeted approach. Here we adopt the L1 regularization approach that has been used in the compressed sensing community for a while to reconstruct undersampled data. In some sense, our data is undersampled as well, as we are missing the outer case space that covers the high frequencies that we need to reconstruct sharp edges. The general equation has two terms. The first one is a data fidelity term. We only want to change the inner case space minimally. The second term is a penalty term, or a regularization term. For the purpose of Gibbs ringing removal, the penalty term must be edge-preserving, and it needs to suppress local oscillations. Both items are captured by the total variation framework. However, total variation minimization imposes a piecewise constant model to the image. This model is too restrictive and might not be an accurate representation of the image itself. Therefore, we here make use of a total general generalization variation framework that describes the underlying data by a piecewise linear model. 
By running some simulations, we showed that the regularization parameter lambda should be in the same order as the noise level in your data to make sure that signal fluctuations due to anatomy are preserved. Let's now look to some results. If we start off with high resolution anatomical MR images, then we can crop the case space to simulate a low resolution acquisition. Applying different window filters shows that image blur cannot be avoided. Both total variation minimization approaches show good edge preservation. However, TV returns patchy, cartoonish images with staircasing artifacts, whereas TGB provides a much more natural looking image. If you then consider ca the case spaces, it is clear that window filtering suppresses measured case space data, whereas TV and TGV extrapolates the case space in a regularized way. Plotting the differential case space energy density reveals that TV overshoots high frequencies, whereas TGV gives a good correspondence with the high resolution data. Very similar results are also obtained for diffusion MRI datasets. Gibbs ringing is clearly visible in the original data. However, the effect is fully suppressed in the total variation approaches. The black voxels in the mean turtles map disappear too. The differences between TV and TGV are clearly visible on the level of the images and the parameter maps. We have shown that the effect of Gibson on the diffusion metrics of interest is unexpectedly strong compared to the 9% fluctuations we see in the diffusion weighted images. To cure this problem without resolution loss, we here describe a comprehensive framework of extrapolating the case space beyond truncation frequency by adopting a physically reasonable representation of the image that is imposed by the second order total generation variation function. We show that the diffusion model parameters are estimated much more robustly and accurately without violating physical constraints using the TGV based Gibbs correction. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you for your attention.